glorify God in their death. And he told Peter how he's going to die. And then Peter, as usual, was always jealous. And he looked at John, knowing that John was the beloved apostle, but also knowing, now listen to Peter, he was a funny guy. He was the head of the whole church. He was the lead apostle. But John was the beloved apostle. And he was jealous of John. Because John was always laying with his head on the chest of Jesus. And our poor Peter, who was the lead apostle, was jealous of him. When Jesus told him the way that he will glorify God in his death, that he will be crucified upside down, he was not impressed. <laughs> and then he looked at John. He said, and what about him, Lord? Jesus said to him, what is that to you? You just follow me. So many times we look at the person next to us and we say, Lord, what about him? What about him? What about him? What about her? Jesus will say to you, what is that to you? You just follow me. You drink your cup and you walk and follow me. Do not worry about the guy next to you. Do not be jealous. Amen? Amen. And John had the privilege that was the only apostle who died a natural death. But if Peter knew the way that he will be tormented, he was thrown into boiling oil. But he survived it. He was thrown into boiling. All the other apostles has been martyred to death. John was the one who was thrown into boiling oil, but he survived that by God's grace. And he survived and he was an exile on the island of Patmos. And he made a meeting with Holy Spirit and everything was revealed to him. So this is written by John as he received it from heaven. Amen. Say thank you Lord for John. Thank you that you gave this to John. It says here, I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the worshippers there, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. Listen, the outer court has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. This is a period. I'm not going to explain everything to you. And I will give power to my two witnesses. Say two witnesses. Listen to what he says. I will give power to my two witnesses. Say power, power. to my two witnesses. Amen. They will prophesy for 1,260 days. Clothed in sackcloth, meaning they will fast and pray and seek my face. These are the two olive trees. These two witnesses are the two olive trees. What does olive trees produce? Huh? Olive oil. Are you getting excited? <laughs> Say two witnesses. Two trees planted by the Father that will produce fruit. And fruit that will last. Every tree that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Every tree that my heavenly father has planted will produce fruit and fruit that will last. There's many trees that's been planted in Jesus' name. But some of these trees have been planted by people. Some have been planted by God. Those who have been planted by God will not be uprooted. But those who have planted, been planted by people, they will be uprooted. What trees are we speaking about? Why do they produce olive oil? These are churches. I mean, this is the, the church of Jesus. Now why does he say two trees? Say to the guy next to every tree that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Now let me tell you something. You will still see them. You will still see the buildings, but there will be no fruit because they will be uprooted. It will only be religious systems. You will still see the buildings, but there will not be no power. And the kingdom of heaven, heaven is not a matter of talking about power. It is very obvious which trees are planted by God. Those who produce fruit. Amen. Amen. But every tree that my heavenly father has planted 
will be a fruit and fruit that will last. And every tree that produces fruit will be pruned. So there might be a more fruit. So sometimes you as a Christian, you cry and say, why is the Lord so hard on me? It's because you produce fruit. Don't cry. Say to the to don't cry. Don't feel so sorry for yourself. Just keep on producing fruit. In Jesus' name. You say, look at the world. They're doing fine. They don't suffer like me. They don't produce fruit. They don't have to be pruned. Amen. 